Hey guys, if you're new to our journey, here's a quick recap to get you up to speed. After buying our Tartan 37 in Racine, Wisconsin, we sailed it around Lake Michigan, then started making preparations to head south to saltwater. We decided to take our boat to the Gulf of Mexico via the Inland River System, which is made up of several rivers and canals, including part of the Mississippi. We unstepped the mast to clear a bunch of low fixed bridges along the route. We then prepared the mast for shipping south via truck, and we'll put it back up when we reach the Gulf. Now for the duration of our trip down the river, we won't be sailing, but rather motoring solely on us. Right now, you've joined us in Grafton, Illinois, about 300 miles into our 1,300 mile journey from Chicago to Mobile, Alabama. We're gonna go see a tugboat. It's actually a tow, but they call it a tugboat tour? No, I called it a tugboat tour. No, it says tugboat tour on the pamphlet. Oh. Yeah. We know better. A towboat has a flat bow for pushing barges. A tugboat has a pointy bow, is much more maneuverable, and can push or pull a larger ship in any direction. So <laughs> the twilight lure. Where it's wood screw, 6,800 horsepower boat. This is where the navigation of the vessel takes place. I've got two two radars, my main radar, and I also have two Xeon searchlights. The Xeon lights uh, can pick up a buoy up to three miles, up two to three miles away on a dark night. It's a long white beam that can be reduced down to about a foot in diameter. From the bottom of the boat, bottom of the bow of the boat, to the river bottom is 9.2 feet deep. So actually the boat's drawn nine foot, so it's about 18 foot deep right here. The electronic chart uh, identifies and tracks other vessels in the area, shows the direction they're traveling, their destination, traveling. the speed, very helpful. It does a lot of other stuff too. All right, all right, there you go. <laughs> what do you think? That was pretty cool. Yeah. I wish we would've got that on camera. I shot some of that. No, when she was like, so what did you do all before all these computers and stuff like that? Oh, Looked yeah. out the window. <laughs> was on this boat, 57,000 gallons. Wow. Wait, I don't understand. So, so that's the most that they've ever filled up at any one time. Oh. But it'll hold 236,000. This is their oil. Yeah, yeah. 140 degrees. Oh my god. Could you imagine working like that? We'll tow anywhere from 25 to 30 south, but we could bring 36 back. So you do six wide by six long? Yes. Wow. Hey brother, how many days in a row do you guys work? We work 28, get off boat 14. In Grafton, there's a winery on top of a hill. Climbing up to it is a thing to do, especially for us boaters who can really use the light workout. It's like 50 degrees out in sweating. It's not 50, it's warmer. Is it? Yeah. 
It's supposed to get to like 69 today. It was morning though, and the winery wasn't open. That was just fine. We were on a mission to see the fall colors. Probably gonna be our best colors. Huh? Yeah, it's crazy because there's like techno lime like set back against. Look at that. Do you see that like blue green moss over there? Yeah. On that tree. Everything's a little bit wet, so all the bark is really dark and setting the colors off. Screw the fall colors. I don't want to get your hair. We planned to stay in Grafton for a couple of days to get some work done, but we ended up staying there almost a week. We checked off a lot of things on our to-do list, including laundry, a provisioning run, computer work, and more engine maintenance. The engine was due for an oil change, and we needed to change the primary fuel filter. This was our first time tackling these tasks, and as always, it takes longer than it should. Fortunately, everything went pretty smoothly. Lauren got some time to do yoga and take a couple of runs along the river. All those beautiful colors. And the Mississippi. And we spent an evening checking out Grafton's nightlife. This multi-level bar called Third Shoot appeared to be the hot spot in town. And now begins our journey down the Mississippi. With its swift four-knot current running in our favor, we plan to cover the 218 miles in just a couple days. Just 15 miles downriver lies the town of Alton, Illinois. It's home to the last floating riverboat casino that's still in operation on the Mississippi, and a flour mill that produces up to two and a quarter million pounds of flour per day. Are we going past Alton? Yeah, we just passed it. I thought you had it turned on. No. Whoops. We didn't get it. Just downriver from Alton, we entered the Chain of Rocks Canal. We're in a canal, that's all. This eight and a half mile long canal was built to bypass a rock-filled section of river just north of St. Louis, which is unnavigable at low water and dangerous at best at high water. Nine nine. Nine nine? Nine nine. What? Just give it a second. Yeah! After the one to two knots we had on the Illinois River, it felt like we were flying down the Mississippi. Kirk, that's probably the first time that chart plotters ever displayed double digits. <laughs> oh, now we're down to 96. Bummer. We're gonna fly by. That's what they said. It's a nice city to watch and wave as it goes past. 
The cruising guide said this almost verbatim, not only because of the swift current, but also because there's literally no place to stop in St. Louis with a boat. No docks, no marinas, no anchorages, no nothing. We were in Grafton this morning, it's still morning, and we're now in St. Louis. We've already done 40 miles. I guess that's what happens when you can do 10 knots. See that barge being lifted out of the water? Oh, wow. What do you think about St. Louis? Well, it'd be a lot cooler if this embankment parking lot actually had some sort of riverfront happenings. Yeah. But yeah, you can see that there is literally nowhere to stop. She don't stand like nobody else. And no, she don't stand. guy. That night we stopped at Hoppy's Marine Services, which is billed as the only fuel stop for the next 107 miles and the only marina for the next 227. It also had a bathroom straight out of a horror movie. The next morning we woke up to a wee bit of fog on the river. I got the radar up and running, so hopefully we get super foggy. Radar is pretty cool. Yeah? Yeah. I can see a lot. We just have never turned it on before, right? Well, I mean, I've turned it on, but I've never really actually tried to use it. I can see the buoys. I can see the little weird damn things. Oh, really? Yeah. What's this? Hear that? It's the radar. We couldn't hear it, but the camera picked it up. We had quite the fender set up at Hoppy's because it was basically just a barge floating along the side of the river. So we were completely exposed to all the toes and current, the wind and everything. So we were banging up against the dock pretty hard and yeah, we had six fenders on one side. So you're not supposed to travel in fog. It's not really completely fo foggy. No, if it gets much foggier though, it's gonna be pretty sketchy. We're trying to make 110 miles today. And to do so, we only have 10 and a half hours of sunlight. And it's supposed to take us in optimal conditions of three or four knots of current, 10 and a half hours. <laughs> so uh, we had to leave a little bit before sunrise to try to arrive so we had enough time to anchor in the light. So, any other notes? Uh, it's very cold. <laughs> Poor guy needs missions. Big woolly mittens. Better yet, just bring a couple of sheep, like two lambs. You can hold one lamb each time. So that's a buoy we just passed. Okay. That's a buoy we just passed. That is this buoy coming up right here. And that's obviously our river banks. You can see the little weir dams and stuff on the side. So this one right here is that one right over there. So it's helpful. We just crossed 156. We've already done two miles this morning. We've only got 108 to go.
Get me out of the desert sun Get me a drink and we'll have some fun Cause it's all a game I'm not scared of a smoking gun My skin is thick and my brain is numb So it's all the same Where does the river go from here? Does it curve or does it stay straight? It curves, but we're like right on a curve. We're going right into the sun. Like if we were going to the side, it would be okay. Shit, that is some thick fog. Yeah, I'm turning around. I don't think we should do this. What do you want to do? Will you drop an anchor? I can sit up on the bow. Yeah, go up on the bow. Keep an eye out for big sticks and stuff too. Okay. This is a little sketchy, but I can still actually see a good 200 feet in front of me, so. And once I go sit on that bow pulpit and make it stop banging around, I should be able to hear more. Today's been our longest day. We've done 75 and a half miles already, and we've got another 35 to go before we hit our anchorage tonight. And we have probably seen more toes and barges today than we have seen at any other part of the river combined. There's just one after another, and this is gonna be a really wild ride through here. These guys are turning up a ton of water. It's gonna be bumpy for a while. yesterday with 10 was fast. <laughs> Our anchorage for the night was called Little Diversion Channel. The entrance was a bit narrow and a few logs seemed to be stuck in the middle, which made us wonder what the shoaling was like under the surface. It's spinning like crazy. Speed over ground, four knots. Yeah, I'm like almost dizzy looking up river. <laughs> kind of crazy. You think I want to be on the up river or the down river part? Oh, it looks pretty in there. I would try to go up. Above it? Yeah. Oh, there's a railroad bridge. It's still 30 feet deep here. There would be no nosing in with the swift current. We knew we had to pick an entrance point and go for it. Otherwise, as soon as we turned broadside to the current, it would take us right into the bank downriver. It's just swirling in the current. Yeah. Uh, all right. Where does the shoaling happen? I think the shoal happens right up there. Oh, well, because it was on the descending bank at Big Blue Island. All right, well, then I'm going to go right above it. Yeah, I think you can. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I feel pretty good about this. 
Yeah. The only it's thing super is super peaceful. Be cold. I know. You can hear the crickets. I don't think we need to go very far up here, do you? No. I think it was just saying you could go all the way to the bridge if you wanted. Yeah. Kurt. Yeah. Look at the size of that barge. Yeah, it is seven wide and eight long. Holy crap. They're all empty though, don't you think? Yeah. But still. Yeah. That is insane. So this is our second night anchoring in the river. Kirk's down below right now putting a rubber mat in the chain locker that we just got from Home Depot so that we protect the inside of our fiberglass of the chain locker from the 200 feet of chain that we just bought. Yes? Will you drop the first few bits of chain into there? Yeah. And actually, before you do that, we should set the anchor. I'm stuck against the, what is that thing called? Binnacle. Binnacle. Maybe we can stand. So we've been kind of dreading this part of the trip. Yeah. And it hasn't been that bad. No, it's sort of been the best part. But yeah, it really has. It's been really pretty. Everything south of St. Louis has been really cool. Yeah. I mean, even Grafton was cool, but yeah, it's like really wild feeling. Whereas like the Illinois felt like a bunch of farmland and like, agriculture this feels like wild yeah and industrial there's so there's, many barges yeah. like there's nothing here Did we get any of that? i mean besides not getting showers which yeah and being freezing sleeping in 29 yeah. degree weather um i want to fill the fuel tank <gasps> with the next fuel can with the next jerry can yeah Well, I think this is where it's going to 